What's up guys? Despite having a YouTube channel for so long and despite getting so many requests, till this day I've not done a proper Q&A video on my channel but today I want to change that. So on my Instagram account and on my Facebook page I asked you guys to ask me a bunch of questions and this video essentially bleeds out of those questions. Um, so let's get started. Where do you get your video ideas from? Um, I don't mean to sound generic or cliched, but it literally could be anything and everything. Like, I think what's happened is I've developed this way of thinking. I've developed this way of thinking where A, I'm, I'm, I'm just generally quite an observant guy and B, my brain is like a sponge where I just pick up upon everything. Um, and through doing YouTube videos and Instagram videos and Facebook videos and just generally creating and developing content um, that part of my personality has found a way to sequentially create um, and narrate a story a narrative um, and there is a science to it but I don't think I can quite explain it it's something that's just become second nature to me like like some certain things that certain people will just overlook or neglect or think is just irrelevant, I would pick up on I would pick up on that information and I think, oh, how come no one talks about this? Or isn't this something that everyone uh, does or thinks, but they think they're the only one? And I think that's where the secret is. Like I don't know, you know, you know certain things like say like on a pillow, like when you're when you're like when you can't sleep, you flip it over, right? and you use the other side to make it colder. Everyone thinks they're the only person that does that. But then the minute someone will say that, they're like, oh my days, I do that too. So I think it's, it's like that. I, I started developing this, uh, I started developing this way of thinking, like how can I tap into areas that are undiscovered? And then once you, once you fall into that mentality, it becomes, um, it, it, it just becomes a part of you. Like I could be walking, I could be reading something, I could be with a friend. And something which is click up now. Oh yeah, you know this. Da, 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 da. Um, but yeah, but in, in terms of what it exactly is, it could be absolutely anything. It could be a person. It could be um, something I've seen on TV, something I've read online, or it could even be like another video I've seen from someone else. I mean, I'm not the type who would want to imitate or copy someone, but I can. I'm definitely influenced by, you know, everyone. Be it Asian YouTubers, Black YouTubers, White YouTubers or whatever else is going on, you know. Everything definitely uh, influences uh, my uh, capabilities, for sure. When are you getting married? Are you married? Do you have someone to get married to? Why aren't you married? What would you look for in someone to get married to? Basically, just marriage overload questions. Okay, let's do it. Am I married? No. Do I have someone to get married to? No. Um, and in terms of why aren't I married and when am I planning to get married? That's such a deep question. Like I don't. Uh, it's not. It's not. Do you know what? I'll be. I'll be honest with you guys. Um, would I like to get married? Yeah, of course. Of course I would. But in terms of when and how and meeting someone and whatnot, that's just like I don't know, man. I don't. I don't think you can really control that or foresee that. Obviously, you can have an idea. Like I'd like to be married by this time. Like yeah, inshallah, I'd love to be married in in the next couple of years. You know. Um, but yeah, right, right, right now it's just, it's just not, um, it's just not something that's prevalent on my mind at the moment. But in terms of uh, what would I look for in someone to get married to, like say I met something, not something, <laughs> say I met someone, um, and I was like, yeah, this this person is compatible, whatnot. What are those things? I like people who are super, super nice. Like I love those people who aren't afraid to be kind, they don't have a threshold of niceness. Because um, I'm like a super, super, uh, I'm, I'm like a huge sucker for affection. Um, and I think it, it's an indication that someone has a big heart if they're prepared to go that extra mile. So yeah, definitely someone who is extremely nice, you know. I would want someone who's fun to be around, someone who's spontaneous. Um, and by spontaneous, I don't mean like we'd have to jump out of a plane every single week. <laughs> I just mean someone who's, um, up to do, who, who's willing to do fun things, you know, just cool things. Um, and I'd also like someone who has a sense of humour because I think spontaneity and humour is, you know, what's gonna keep uh, people uh, 
it's, it's what's going to keep chemistry going, it's what's going to keep a bond alive, it's what's going to pick up a relationship when there's negativity there. So I definitely think, yeah, those things I'd, I'd love to have in someone, you know. I'm a huge family orientated guy, so I that person would have to mirror that, they'd have to, family would have to be like a big part of their life. Um, so that, you know, like they can fit into my family and I can fit into their family. And like I'm not too bothered about academic intelligence, but I would like someone to have some sort of intellectual capacity. Um, just so that you can hold a conversation um, or you're just aware and alert of things because it's just interesting to speak to someone and have substance there. You know, I wouldn't just want someone um, who doesn't know what's going on around the world but yeah I'm not gonna I'm not gonna constrain that to a degree like just just in fact certain people you know may be really educated but they may lack or they may be socially inept so that for me would be a problem I, I definitely need to be constantly um, having conversations and talking um, about stuff you know so the more aware you are, are of things um, that helps but yeah in, in, academically it doesn't mean anything to me, man. You could have a PhD. It's not going to keep a marriage alive, like real talk. There's also a part of me that craves something that's completely inexplicable. Like, I'd want someone, like, I'd want a part of someone that is completely different to me, right? And I think, obviously, that's their personality. Like, you can't, um, like, I don't want to uh, ask for a certain type of personality. I think personality is something so pure that I'd want that to be... Um, unadulterated like I'd want obviously I'd want them to be likeable and affable and friendly and whatnot but I think yeah I wouldn't want someone that does everything I say or do I want room for someone different so I can learn and so I can develop and it's just interesting you know I wouldn't like if everything was just the same as me it'd be boring so yeah there's definitely that aspect as well there's also that side to me that's quite shallow and I'd crave certain things like for example looks um, yeah, it, it'd be nice to have someone that's pretty. Um, someone's voice, I think someone's voice is uh, something that's often overlooked. But yeah, someone's voice really matters to me, like how they speak. Because that's that voice that you're going to hear for the rest of your life. So, um, if it's not nice sounding, it might affect the way I see the whole thing. People are going to look at this and think, oh my days, that Ali official guy is so high maintenance. What's the most misconstrued thing about you? Um, I think often my ethnicity is mixed up. People think I'm a lot more famous than I actually am. People think um, I'm more richer than I actually am. People think that I think that I'm a lot more successful than I actually am. But here, I think here, this the worst thing, um, I think, about being a popular type of person is people thinking that they actually know what you're like um, because I think what happens is people see you online and people see you on TV and they take those snippets of your life and they vicariously put themselves through you and they think right this guy must think this 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 but the actuality of it is completely different um, you know I'd say I'd say very few people know what I'm really like because obviously say what all this does is it makes me so aware of everything like every time i'm speaking to someone every time a camera is on every time i'm in front of the telly i'm so aware that i'm being watched that there's a part of me that's not fake but there's a certain aspect of my personality that is at its apex like it's at its highest form um and that's constantly happening um, so in real life, I'm, like I'll be real with you, a lot of people think I lie uh, when I say I'm quite a shy person, I'm quite a reserved person. People laugh or people think like, oh, alright, whatever mate. And but people, people fail to realise that's actually true. In, in social situations, I'm very quiet, I'm very kind of socially awkward. Um, I have like a very small circle of friends that I'm completely me around. Um, that side of me doesn't often um, come out, and I think, I think in that in that respect, a lot of people may be disappointed with what I'm like in real life. I'm actually a very ordinary, very boring um, 
type of dude. In fact, let me tell you guys right now, I'm not into football, I'm not into gym, I'm not into cars, I'm not into video games. Like every other, you know, dude I know, and I think there's a part of me that kind of, I don't know. I think pe people, people think you're something that you're actually not, so in return, Perhaps sometimes I feel unworthy of all of this, you know. Um, I'm, I'm, and that, here's another thing, as we're on this subject, I think a lot of people also think praise, attention and respect and girls and um, all of this stuff makes you so secure, makes you so happy, makes you so content and, you know, you're not worthy of having a bad day in your life. I'll be real with you, I'd be 100% real with you. I've never felt more insecure in my life, yeah. Um, and that's because of all the responsibility, all the pressure, um, all the attention that is on you. So the very thing that the very thing that you think I am, I'm actually the complete opposite. You'd never think that until you're in my shoes, you know. And I and I know for so many people, it's exactly the same. That are my peers, you know. Um, so yeah, in, the, in in that respect, I think the worst thing is people thinking you're something, and then they react like that. So they're like, oh, this guy's so popular, this guy's so cool, that I'll just leave a hate comment because it's not gonna affect him at all. It is, brother. It is. We're not, we're still human at the end of this day. We still have hearts in it. So, you know, I'm not immune to uh, malicious uh, comments with animosity. Of course, of course that, that's gonna affect someone. It affects everyone. You know, all these, all these people. Uh, that say haters motivate me, haters, uh, you know, because I find my haters. Nah, to me, like, it's, it's not that. Like, I feel like negative people are negative people. They don't do nothing to me. It's annoying. It is annoying. I honestly, like, I honestly think if you don't like something I do, just don't watch it. Like, if I watch something online and I don't like it, do you know what I do? I click the red button, I click the X, and that's it. You know, I think a lot of people, there's this whole culture that's developed of, having to name and shame someone, having to expect someone, oh, this person has changed, or having to announce your departure, I'm unfollowing you, or I'm unsubscribing you. It's like, if you don't like me, that's fine. If you don't like my content, that's fine. But if, as a result of that, you're gonna get, you know, disrespectful, and you're gonna be condescending, just, you might as well just leave, because, you know, there's, there's, there's no point in doing that. You know, you wouldn't like if someone did that to you, why do it to someone else? Why? Just because he has a bunch of followers, you think he's, the way he internalizes all of that is going to be any different? That's delusion. That's delusion. When someone thinks they know you because of the way other people are perceiving them. How did you get a job at Warner Brothers and what was it like working for them? Uh, for those who don't know, I um, had a one year contract with um, Warner Brothers as a digital marketing assistant. How did I get the job? I literally just applied for a position I saw online. I had four interviews and I got in, that's it. Like, they, they, I think people think um, there's some secret, elaborative answer. It's really not, I just applied. I think they liked obviously what I was doing and I got the job, that's it. What was the experience like? Absolutely phenomenal. Like, yeah, you know, it was, it was everything I thought it would be and more. Um, and you know, I, I had so many cool little experiences. I got to meet, so like, because we were marketing films, I also got to see the cast behind the films um, at the premieres and stuff. So I got to meet like Will Smith, I got to meet Jennifer Aniston, I got to meet Christopher Nolan, Matthew McConaughey, the entire cast of The Hobbit, the entire cast of The Horrible Bosses 2. Um, so many like people that I've looked up to all my life and to see them, it was just so cool, but yeah, the entire experience was was crazy so fun and so intense guys I'm gonna end this video here if you did enjoy this please give it a big thumbs up and if you want to know something that I haven't answered leave it in the comments below and I'll try and do like a part two of this one time as well inshallah I will see you in a new video very soon peace love and respect